All right, guys. Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be doing a run through of exam objective 5.1 for the Compture A plus 1101 exam. We're going to go through pretty much everything you're going to need to know for this learning objective. And the reason I'm going to do this one is because I got this comment from, um, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. It's a lot of numbers and letters, but he says, Hey, I'm really grateful. I failed the A plus A plus test last night. So I came here to this video. Can you please make videos for all of section 5.0 hardware and troubleshooting? So that's what I'm going to be doing today, starting with learning objective 5.1. So if we take a look at what that is, that is right here. So it says 5.1, given a scenario, apply the best practice methodology to resolve problems. So this is on the Comptra website. Before you start studying for any of it, make sure you go download the exam objective so you actually know what it is you're doing. Otherwise, you're just shooting in the dark. So for this one, we are going to be only focusing on one dot point because there's only actually one dot point here for this one. So this one's really pretty straightforward. Always consider corporate policies, procedures, and impacts before implementing changes. So in terms of what this is actually going to require you to need to do for your exam, if we take away all that funky language, basically there's a troubleshooting process that Comptia wants you to follow and they want to make sure that you are able to identify what part of the troubleshooting process the person in the question is currently completing or they'll want you to identify what step in the troubleshooting process comes next. That's for the most part, pretty much what you're going to need to be able to do. So, so long as we know what each step of the troubleshooting process is, we're able to identify it and we know what order they go in, which once you get the hang of it, it's pretty intuitive. You're going to be fine for this one. It's not that tricky, to be honest, in my opinion. So we will head over to the learning guide, which uh, I have here in front of me now, A plus 1101 learning guide. We'll scroll down. We're only wanting to focus on exam objective 5.1. So we will come down and we will click on 5.1, which will bring us right where we need to go and head straight to the notes. Now, this is going to be a pretty, pretty decent breakdown of what we need to know. So like I said, this is Comptia's troubleshooting process. It is only Comptia's troubleshooting process. So you don't need to know this and memorize it and bring it into your particular company that you might go and work for after you finish the exam. Every company is going to have their own process that they do. This is just the one that Comptia wants you to know and memorize for the sake of the exam, because it gives you a pretty good base, you know, just the ability to eliminate variables, see what is the issue, the general idea of needing to document what went wrong so that the next technician can uh, look at your notes and see if the issue they're having is something similar to what you've dealt with in the past, which might speed up their process. So let's get straight into the actual uh, the actual meat of it, shall we? So the troubleshooting process is as follows. We have first identify the problem. This is where we're essentially trying to figure out what the problem is. This is where we are asking the person over the phone uh, questions. We're doing that initial interrogation, seeing if anything has changed recently to identify, hey, maybe that could have caused the issue. The next step is establish a theory based on the information you gather from that initial step. You're establishing a theory. Okay, it seems like this might be the thing that is wrong based on the information I've gathered. Pretty intuitive so far. The next step is test the theory. This is where we might perform some initial tests to see if our theory is correct. And if we find that our theory is not correct, we would be looping back to establish another theory. If it is correct, we'll move on to the next step, which is establish a plan of action. So this is where we figure out how we're going to implement uh, intervention in order to make sure that we can actually fix this thing on the larger scale and completely get rid of the problem altogether. Once we do that, the next step is verify full system functionality, which is essentially where we're just making sure the device is working as it is designed to and the issue has been solved. Once we have verified functionality, we move on to the final step, which is document the findings. You write it up so that the next technician can look back on your notes so that whoever wants to see 
that can see it and it's it's uh, documented in the system. Now that's a lot to remember. You know that that was a lot of word salad, I guess. So an easy way that I like to remember and what I did going into my exam when I took the A plus eleven oh one exam was I came up with this little uh, funky word thing, which I uh, mnemonic I think they call them, to to help me remember this in order because. It's pretty intuitive and it makes sense to remember this troubleshooting process. It's not rocket science, but when you're in exam conditions and the questions get very, very wordy and seemingly unnecessarily complicated, it can be really easy to panic and get the question wrong, not because you don't know it, but because you're looking at the clock and the clock's ticking away and you're thinking to yourself, oh my God, why can't I get my brain to work? So to stop that from happening, we've got this little mnemonic here, which is, instead of saying, okay, identify the problem, establish a theory, test the theory, it's just, you know, that's the technical terminology, I said to myself, all right, I enjoy taking everyone's internet very diligently. So I stands for identify, enjoy stands for establish a theory, Taking stands for test. Everyone's internet stands for establish, uh, plan, and implement. And then very stands for verify, kind of sounds like verify as well. And diligently stands for document. And in my brain, I enjoy taking everyone's internet very diligently. I had this image of like uh, this, I guess this kind of this, this goes, this cheeky little like goblin behind a computer that's like trying to hack into systems and take people's internet. So whenever I would see a question based on, I'll get that off your screen because you probably don't want to look at that. But whenever I'd have a question based on, um, you know, this, what step in the troubleshooting process comes next, I would immediately think of this picture of this cheeky little goblin behind a computer. And I would think of my mnemonic, okay, he's trying to take people's internet. What is it? I enjoy taking everyone's internet very diligently. Um, and that would, that would get me to where I need to go. So, uh, a further breakdown of each of the steps. I've pretty much gone through this with you already. So you've got some more information on what each of those steps are here as well and exactly what they involve. Pause the video if you want to take a more in-depth look at that. Otherwise, we're going to go ahead and move on to the first set of active recall questions. So these questions here that you have on your screen are not questions that I've actually included answers with in the learning guide. And the reason for that is, I know people might find it frustrating, but my goal in creating this learning guide is not to necessarily make it easy for you. My goal is to do what is going to result in the, the highest amount of learning. And for the active recall questions, what I want you to be able to do is I want you to be able to look at these questions and if you can't answer them, you're not gonna be able to just flick to the next page and see, oh, okay, that's the answer. Because if you get in the habit of doing that, you fall into a really dangerous trap that a lot of people fall into, which is you fall into the trap of not actually understanding why it's right, but you just kind of mem try to memorize the answer. And it's almost like a match the answer to the question instead of understanding it and being able to clearly explain why that is the correct answer. Because if you can't clearly explain it and you need to try and choose from a bunch of different multiple choice options, you're probably not where you need to be. So we wanna to get to the point where we can actually look at an open-ended question like this and clearly explain it and talk about why our answer is correct. So we'll take a look at a quick example here. Uh, kind of an easy one, let's look at the second one here. Why is it important to ask questions and gather detailed information when identifying a problem. So here, you know, we'd want to think to ourselves, okay, why do we want to ask questions? Because we want to get a, as much information as we can to try to accurately understand what the problem could be. So for example, if we ask this person the question, you know, has anything changed in your environment as of late? And they say, oh yeah, I guess like not much, but they started construction outside and the internet's down. It's like, okay, so the only thing that's changed is construction. Maybe they've they've hit a wire outside, right? Just, just for example's sake, that might be uh, something that we want to think about. So pause the video if you want to have a go at all of those. If you don't know, right, this is where you can do a couple of things. You can actually, I highly encourage you if you don't know, 
actually research it on the internet and go through that process of researching and finding it out instead of just trying to flick up and find the answer. But, you know, alternatively, that's what we've got these notes here for. The answer to the questions are in the notes. You'll have to crawl through the notes and read through and try to understand, try to locate where it is. Uh, but it is in the notes if you want to read through it and get it, get it done really quickly. But I encourage you to try to actually Google it and go through as many sources as you can until you properly understand why it's correct. Now, that being said, we'll move on to the more quiz-based questions, which is where I, I do have answers on the next sheet of paper because I know people, you know, they want to learn, but we also want to be able to just see if we're right really quickly. So that's what these, that's what these ones are designed for. So... Um, Outline the steps involved in the troubleshooting process. You should be able to outline them uh, off the top of your head. You should be able to think to yourself, what are the steps involved in the troubleshooting process? Uh, I enjoy taking everyone's internet very diligently. I stands for identify, enjoy stands for, you know, etc. You should be able to do that from the top of your head, hopefully. If you can't, make sure you can before you take the exam because you can get uh, a decent amount of questions on that. The second one, what is one very important question you should ask during the identifier phase of the troubleshooting process? Uh, little little tip, we just talked about it, right? So it's uh, if something has changed recently, that's going to give you a huge indication about what the problem might be and how you can go about fixing it. If something has changed in the environment recently, that's probably going to indicate to you where the problem's going to be. And then... Um, Go ahead and pause the video if you want to take a further look at these questions here. And when you're ready for the answers, uh, you can scroll down and they'll be here in green with a brief explanation. Okay, now again, what you'll notice with these answers are they're not necessarily in the standard multiple choice format. And the reason is, you know, I created two separate products. I created the learning guide, which is designed for the purpose of being used as a study guide as you follow Professor Mess's free YouTube video series. It's designed for you to be able to study for the purpose of understanding, right? The purpose of this is to put it in your brain. So it's not as effective to actually gain an understanding to just smash out uh, multiple choice questions before you've actually understood the content. You want to do that once you've covered the content and you have a basic fundamental understanding of it. And you want to do that to see where you're at and if you're ready. But you don't just want to jump into that straight away. So the learning guide's purpose is to get you to actually, I'm essentially trying to force you. I'm forcing you to go through this process of, okay, here's a question. Uh, what is it? What important question you should ask during the identify phase of the troubleshooting process? Oh, wait a second. There's not four answers to choose from. I actually have to make sure that I know what the answer is just by looking at the question, right? Or Because if you're at the point where you're trying to almost guess, uh, is it A or B or C or D? Th realistically speaking, that's where you're probably going to be at a little bit when you take the exam, and even I was to an extent. But you want to aim to get as close as you possibly can to the point where you read the question, and before you've even looked at what the options are, because you have such a fundamental understanding of it, you're already like, oh, it's probably going to be this answer. And then it's just a matter of reading through the multiple choice options and seeing if the answer you thought is there. And then if you see that it's there, it's like, okay, cool. So I'm, um, yeah, you know, I'm on it. So that's why I don't provide you with those multiple choice options there because I want to force you to go through the process of actually understanding. If you don't know, you've got the answers here. And if you don't entirely understand it from there, go and do your own research as well. But you've got the questions, you've got the detailed answers there. Okay, so really everything you need. Um, but that's why I don't give you those multiple choice options. And that is 5.1. So hopefully that was a, a really, really quick and dirty rundown of it. Like I said, I'm just kind of trying to briefly cover this. Uh, hopefully you paused the video and had a look at the questions that were available here for this one, how to go at all of these yourself. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, uh, plus five. You've got 15 questions there. Some, uh, some are, what are they called? Uh, situational based, situation based questions. Like you'll, 
get in the exam as well. Um, this is a really good example here. After completing the identify phase of the troubleshooting process, Mika is ready to move on to the next phase. What is the next phase and what does it involve? So actually getting you to explain that phase, right? And what is involved in it. So in order to answer this one, you'll have to be able to, off the top of your head, lay out the different phases and then also explain what's involved in that phase. Okay, so that's it guys. That's 5.1. Hopefully that was all right. I'm trying to give you guys, uh, you know, all you really need to smash exam objective 5.1. So I will be going through exam objective 5.2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and all the way to the end. Uh, every couple of days I'll bring out these videos. But if you don't want to wait and you want to go ahead and just grab your own copy straight away so you can get straight to it, go ahead and go over to juniordecipher.com and grab the learning guide here. It's only five dollars, five Australian dollars. So if you're in America, that's crazy value. Look how many pages this is. It's uh, not that one. Where is it? It is, where is it? Where'd it go? Here we go. It's uh, 326 pages and you've got all of this for five Australian dollars. That's absolutely, that's psychotic, guys. That is absolutely psychotic. That is so affordable. And then you've also got the practice exams if you want those more exam-based questions where you've got the multiple choice um, answers and the performance-based questions as well. You can grab the practice exams for 10 Australian dollars. So really, really cheap. By far the best value for money as far as I'm concerned. Really, really best value for money that is out there. Other than that, I will see you next time. So thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.